Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to take just a quick second to share with you my top three Maligator Mom must-haves. First on my list is Tactipup.com. Now these are the collars that you see my dogs wearing in all my videos, and I personally prefer the two inch width. You can get them with their name embroidered on them, and I always have them add a handle. These collars are made with a cobra buckle and all metal hardware. They are incredibly durable and they are made right here in the USA. So if you're interested, check out tactipup.com and use my code MALLIGATORMOM to save 10%. And number two, everybody wants to know, what do you feed your dogs? Well, this is it. I feed my dogs Munster Milling. Now this is a customizable kibble, so you can actually go onto their website and select additives that they will mix fresh into your bag. It's absolutely phenomenal. I add things like bacon fat, salmon oil, probiotic, and freeze-dried elk. If you're interested, use my code MALLIGATORMOM and you will save 55% off your first custom bag. And number three, if you are interested in online dog training videos, you definitely need to check out robertcabral.com. I have consumed a lot of online dog training videos and Robert is by far the best. Head over to robertcabral.com, use code MALLIGATORMOM. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Maligator Mom. And you might have noticed that mom is in the title of my name. And that actually is a huge part of my collective experience of who I am and what I have to share with you guys here on the channel. And over the years, I have actually had a few of you, not many of you, but a few of you reach out to me with this special request. And that is that you are pregnant. You are expecting a baby and you have a Malinois in the home and you're not sure how to make these two worlds mesh rather than collide. And so in today's video, I am going to try to help you out with a pragmatic approach, some things you can do right now while you're still pregnant, while you're still expecting that will help this be a smooth transition. And this is also gonna be a great video for those of you that maybe you already have a baby or you have a young baby or young toddler and you're not quite sure um, how to make you know a nice symbiosis in the house between the dog and the baby. So stay tuned for today. This video is for you. So in an attempt to just keep it real with you guys, I am going to rock my messy bun. I am not putting on a lick of makeup. I am running on caffeine and just pure adrenaline because I mean, you know, let's be honest ladies, that is what most days are like for us as moms. And so um, cheers to you, cheers to the moms, and let's get into today's video. So first of all, I just wanna say congratulations to you if you are expecting a baby, that's super fun. Or if you are um, a brand new mom, if you just had a baby, congratulations to you as well. I know that this is a super special time in your life. I know that firsthand, I'm a mom four times over. So I hope you're enjoying this time, but I also know that it can be really stressful. And you have the added facet of having a Belgian Malinois, which is in and of itself a whole job and time commitment that a lot of other people don't have. And so I know that there might be a little stress or anxiety around this whole idea of a baby and a Belgian Malinois. But today I wanna to try to give you some solid advice, a pragmatic approach, some information that will translate in the long term to help you be successful with your Malinois and your baby. And I wanna give you some examples today of some things that you can start doing right now, right now today. Even if you're pregnant or expecting, these are some things you need to start doing before the baby gets here. And I've got a couple things for you as well. If you're someone who just had a baby, then this is gonna work for you too. Because I know that it can be a wonderful time in your life, but it can also be a very stressful, overwhelming time in your life. And if you have a Belgian Malinois, that could be adding immense stress to an already somewhat stressful situation. Um, you know, becoming a mom, it can be a lot. And you know, there is the physical drain, there is the mental drain because 
your mind never really shuts off as a mom, you know, you've always got your ears perked and your mind running. Um, you know, and then even with your dog, with your Malinois, I think as women, we have kind of that mothering, nurturing instinct, even towards our dogs. So our minds don't really shut off even about our dogs. At least that's true for me. Um, and sometimes it can get to be really overwhelming. I mean, you know, you, you might very well, if, if you're not ready for this, you might very well have spent some time shedding tears in the closet when no one was looking. And I don't think you'd be alone in that. So my hope today is to get some information to you that will help you um, make this a smooth transition. I, don't, I want this to mesh for you. I don't want these two worlds to collide. I want to introduce a concept to you that should be life-changing when it comes to you and your dog, especially in this situation, because it can be applied in so many ways for so many situations that you're gonna be facing as a new mom that um, you can really get creative and it can really be fine-tuned to you, to your life, to your routine, to your needs. So let's break this down and get into this video. All right, so here we go. This is going to be the biggest takeaway from today's video. I've talked about it in previous videos, but it's worth mentioning again in today's video because of how widespread the application can be when you are expecting a new baby or have a new baby in the home. That is this. Dogs learn in pictures. Dogs learn in pictures. They literally take a mental snapshot of what is going on when they experience something positive or negative. So that is how they learn. This is why when we are teaching a dog something new, we will reward once a dog is in the position we want them to be in. Because once they're in that position, so say we're teaching a heel and they get into that position, that's why we reward in position because they're taking a mental snapshot of what exactly they're doing, what exactly is going on when they receive the reward. So um, that can also be demonstrated, for example, like say you teach your dog to sit. That's a very easy thing to do, right? But you've only ever taught your dog to sit when you're at home inside the house. And then let's say you take your dog out to the front yard and you ask your dog to sit. And you know this is something he knows because he does it 10 out of 10 times inside the house. But then you took him to the front yard and you asked him to sit and he didn't. He had no idea what you were asking. He looked at you like you were a complete fool. That's because, yes, mama, that's because dogs learn in pictures. And this was a completely new picture to him. He had never been asked to sit outside in the grass, in the, in the fresh air. He, he didn't know what that meant because his mental picture, when you asked him to sit, was always in the house. And now you've introduced a new environment and he was puzzled. Okay, so this is, just proof, this is just proving to you that dogs learn in pictures. Now this is widely known and widely understood. I'm just trying to give you an example of you know, how we know that. So how do you take advantage of that? How do you leverage that? How do you translate that into having a new baby or being pregnant and expecting a baby? What exactly do you mean by that? So if dogs learn in pictures, then that means that you can start creating pictures inside the house that your dog can learn from. And it's so simple and it's so easy to, um, to fine tune it to, to all of your individual situations. So, this so I wanna introduce one of those situations to you right now. Let's paint a picture for your dog right now. I want you to go to uh, YouTube or, or someplace after you watch this video where you can get some audio of a baby crying. And I want you to turn that on on your phone and I want you to either put it in a crib, put it in a car seat on the floor, put it in a bassinet, whatever you have to do, put it on the couch and cover it with a blanket, whatever you have to do, play the audio of a baby crying for your dog. All right, that's step one of painting this picture. Step two of painting the picture is when the dog hears the baby crying, you're going to ask him for something. And that depends on you and your situation. So that might be the baby cries. That's a cue for you to get up and show your dog that when the baby cries, that means he goes to place. Because if your baby is crying, you have to get up and tend to your baby, which means you can't worry about what your Malinois is doing. So he needs to be contained at that point, whether you teach him to go to his place, whether you teach him to go to his crate, whatever it is, depends on you. You can paint this picture however you want. But when your baby starts crying, that should be a cue for your dog 
to do something that you need him or want him to do. Now, please do not confuse this with thinking, well, that's gonna make my dog hate the baby or resent the baby. That is a load of crap. No, it's not. This is no different than if you teach your dog to go to place every time the phone rings, or if you teach your dog to go to his crate every time someone knocks at the door, or whatever it might be. That, that does not mean that your dog starts to resent the telephone or resent the front door or the mailman or whatever it might be. That's just a load of crap. Don't worry about it. Your dog's not going to resent your baby because he cries and that means he has to go to place. This is just a picture that we're painting for your dog. He'll still love your child, um, but, but he'll love him at the appropriate time. And when the baby is crying, that is not the time that you want your dog to be giving you attention or the baby attention or being in the way. And there's nothing wrong with prioritizing your child like that. So let's put this into practice. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Here's something that you pregnant or expecting moms can start to practice. This is a scenario that I've put together, a completely normal average day, sitting at home, reading a book, dogs are out, all is fine. But this is where that crying baby playlist comes in. So eventually you're going to be dealing with this. An interruption. The baby begins to cry. So just like you know what you have to do, you also need to have your dogs clear expectations of what they're supposed to do. So that means practicing this because there is no urgency right now. This is just a recording of a baby crying. When the real baby is crying in here, you're not gonna have time to teach this command. You want to have this down before your baby arrives. That means working on a really solid place command so that as soon as your baby starts to cry, you can just give them a verbal place and your dog goes to his place. As part of training, this should mean that your dog gets a treat or a reward. Something positive happens when they go to their place bed. So don't worry about your dog resenting the baby crying or associating the baby crying with something bad happening. In fact, we're doing the exact opposite. We're teaching your dog that when the baby cries, this means I get to go take a break and get a treat. It's not that bad of a deal, I promise. My dogs actually have such a solid place command that I can do things like leave the room and come back to the room. If I needed to set my baby down on the couch and step away for a, you know, a, a, a second or two, whatever, um, you know, I can trust that my dogs are not gonna get up and go mess with the baby because I've set the baby down. So here, I'm just kind of walking around. Maybe I needed to grab a bottle. Maybe I needed to get a diaper. Um, whatever it might be, you're not going to have your baby in your arms all the time. So these are practical scenarios to start practicing before the baby even arrives. Again, just do this a couple times a day. And in the months leading up to your baby's arrival, by the time the baby gets here, your dog is going to know exactly what to expect. He's going to know what you want him to do. And it is going to be smooth sailing. Now let's practice another situation coming in the door when you are carrying a diaper bag and a car seat and all the gear, maybe you even have a stroller on your back, the last thing you wanna do is deal with being bombarded by the dogs. So start practicing coming in, setting your stuff down and setting clear boundaries for your dog. Your dog should not be allowed to just approach the infant car seat. So set those boundaries now and start practicing now. This is the same can be said for when it's time to leave the house. If you have all of this gear, you're trying to get a stroller out the door, you don't wanna worry about your dogs rushing out the door just because it's open. You might need to give yourself some extra time and space at the door. So again, create these boundaries, start working on impulse control so that you can open the door wide, get your stroller in and out, whatever you need to do without pressure from the dogs. Here's another super realistic scenario. As a new mom with an infant, anytime I wanted to shower, I would put my baby in the bassinet and bring the baby into the bathroom with me. But this also means that you need to set thresholds for the dog, which means maybe the dog is not welcome into the bathroom, maybe the dog is not welcome into the nursery, maybe the dog is not welcome into your master bedroom, whatever it might be, just Look around the house and think of where you might want to start setting some thresholds that your dog is not allowed to cross without being invited. So you might be wondering if all of this is really necessary. Like, do you really need to get out the infant car seat and practice at the door? Do you really need to, like, get your stroller out or um, get the bassinet out and, and practice with the dog around those things? Yeah. 
Like, like, yes, yes, you do. That's the whole point of today's video is me trying to explain to you that dogs learn in pictures. You do not want to introduce the infant car seat to your dog for the first time when you get home from the hospital and there's a baby inside it. You want the dog to be familiar with these items, familiar with these pictures. You've introduced these things ahead of time so that when you do come home from the hospital and you set your infant carrier down on the floor, because we all do that, your dog already knows he's not allowed to approach that. He shouldn't be. That should be a boundary. And you've created that because you've practiced it. And you don't even have to do this like every day. Don't, don't get overwhelmed and think that this is some task or some training thing that you need to like spend an hour a day doing or, or anything like that. Don't overwhelm yourselves with it. Truly, if you just did this a couple times a week, um, you know, for like a month or two, you'd probably be good. It, it would be enough that your dog would know what was up. And that's kind of what we're getting at, right? That's, that's the aim. That's the goal. We want these things to not be foreign to the dog. We're trying to paint a picture so that your dog has clear expectations. I hope that that makes sense. And, and I hope that, you know, you can get creative on your own. So these are just like a couple scenarios that I thought of that came to mind as a mom when I was trying to think of, you know, what, what would be some things that would irritate me if I had a new baby and I was dealing with all my Malinois. And these were the kind of the, the things that first came to mind. But every family is different. Every mom is different. Every house is different. You might not live in a home. You might live in an apartment or a townhome. Who knows? So all of your variables are going to be different from mom to mom, from dad to dad, couple to couple. So just keep in mind that in the months to come while you're waiting for your baby to arrive, you can truly be just scanning over your environment and just thinking to yourself, hmm, you know, if I'm going to give my baby a bath, what would that look like? Are you doing that on the kitchen counter in a baby bath like I did? Are you doing that, um, you know, in the bathroom, in your tub? Wh like, where are you doing that? Where is that taking place? And what do you want from your Malinois? What is the expectation of your dog while you're tending to your baby and tending to that task? So think about those things. Run through those scenarios in your mind. And then go practice it. Go paint a picture with your dog and introduce it to your dog. You will take loads of stress off of your plate if you have introduced some of these pictures to your dog before your baby arrives. If your baby is already here, these are just as applicable. You can still practice these things and still get something from this video. So if you have a baby already, then go do these exact same things. Just do it with your baby in tow. That's all right, no big deal. You might be a little bit behind, but I promise you, you are going to have fast, measurable gains if you just do these things with your dog, you know, a couple times a week. Start setting expectations, start setting boundaries. Make sure that you keep your dog safe, make sure that you keep your baby safe so that it's one less thing that mom has to worry about. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope that you take the time to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. It helps me immensely uh, get noticed on YouTube in the algorithm and push my video out to other people so that other people can also benefit from this information. And then of course, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell for notifications because I upload, I'm here for you guys, every single Saturday at 9 a.m. Central. I'll see you guys same time next week.